So a very quick explainer what's going on here. YouTube editor has kind of gone a bit weird on me. I just decided to take this video down and put it back up because when I was trying to like fix it, this just kept intercutting with it. That's not even part of this video. I don't know. Anyway, thought it was better to take it down, bring it back. Let's get this explainer over. But as always, like, subscribe, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Anyone else watch GoldenEye with Martin Campbell? Cinefix hosted a watch along with Martin Campbell and Famke Janssen. I've linked the whole thing below, but I know some of you won't want to watch a two and a half hour discussion of people watching a Bond movie. However, I will. So here are the best bits. As you know, Campbell directed GoldenEye and Casino Royale. He's an expert at reintroducing a Bond. The only man to do it twice. Also, I think he was the oldest Bond director ever, and he's arguably directed the best Brosnan and Craig film. When it comes to Campbell and Bond, I'm all ears. I didn't start watching Bond movies until 1999, so for me, Goldeneye was always part of the pantheon. It was nice to get some insights from Campbell, new things that he felt they were bringing to the series with this film, like focusing on Natalia for such a large portion of the film and not having Bond in it. That hadn't been done before. Also, casting Famke Janssen. And what words do you live by? The trick is to quit while you're still a kid. Well, that's one trick I've never learned. Perhaps you'll show me how it's done. Vodka martini. Shaken, not stirred. And for you? The same. How do you take it? Straight up. With a twist. My two Dutch friends love her. So I assume they'll like that little story of her getting the job. Also that story about the spa scene. I knew she'd hurt herself, but I didn't know she cracked her ribs. They even padded the walls and they still injured her. Jesus Brosnan, calm down. I know it was your first film, but still. A big takeaway though, was this Bond film had a tight budget. This film wasn't like Spectre where they were gonna go madly over budget and get away with it. As Michael Wilson has pointed out, in 1995, people thought GoldenEye was a $60 million gamble that wasn't worth taking. They really had to stretch the money to make this film work. Run a tight ship. And I know every film production tries to do this, but compare this film to 1991's Terminator 2 that had a $100 million budget, give or take. This had 60% of that but it looks like it's a hundred million dollars too. Campbell really knows how to stretch the money and make it look so good. And that's my other takeaway. Martin Campbell is from that generation of filmmakers that want to put everything on screen. They want to do things for real, give you spectacle. His films don't have loads of CGI. Well, we're not counting this one, but in his films with practical stunts, they just age so well. And that's because this is done for real. And even if they're not doing things for real, they're using miniatures. So shots like these just look better when you come back to them over and over again. These miniatures are actually quite large. They're jokingly referred to as bigatures. There's something about the human mind, even with the great technological innovations and improvements in CGI. Over time, the eye can still tell what isn't real. It might be the physics, lighting, the way actors interact with it, but whatever it is, our brain lights up and goes, that's not right. When we see CGI, it just sets us off. However, models and miniatures tend to either look good or bad. Their quality is locked into time with when they were captured on celluloid. It just doesn't seem to age as badly as computer-generated images. 
Maybe that's because most of the technology and styles are set in stone, while computers are always constantly improving, so it's easier for us to tell the difference if something looks old. Although there can be issues with modeling water, it just looks better and a little bit closer to the real thing. And models are probably always going to look better than something like this. If we don't do this. I'm not trying to pick on the artists that spent hours doing this image and trying to make it look good. It's not their fault. It's just a misuse of CGI and its potential. Deep down, you know this doesn't look right. While in The Spy Who Loved Me, when they did this, they worked every practical trick in the book to try and convince the audience it was real. Yes, if you know where to look, you could point out a few of the faults and seams. But filmmaking is the art of telling a lie and temporarily convincing your audience it's true. Suspension of disbelief. I'm not against CGI, but when it's used badly, it can just take you out of the film. To go back to Terminator 2, Cameron used it sparingly, but well. It seems like Martin Campbell's preferences align with trying to do everything in camera and occasionally using CGI to improve it. You may not know it, but one of his best scenes actually has CGI in it. You just wouldn't know. So what's this little CGI rant mean? Well, I know Martin Campbell, you're 77 right now, but in a few years, you're coming back and reintroducing the world to a new bond again. We're not negotiating. We'll back up the money truck for you, whatever it takes. You're one of the best modern bond directors and we need you. We always do. There you go, everyone. One aspect of Martin Campbell and why I think he was a great bond director. Also, some takeaways from that commentary. I didn't talk about Famke Janssen enough in this video. She was great in it. If you're a filmmaker or just a film buff, I highly recommend you watch it. If you're like me, you probably know the film off by heart. So I just put it in my AirPods and listen to it like a podcast. <laughs> Let me know if you think Martin Campbell should come back and direct Bond again. Or who would you like to see direct a Bond film? I know we're all holding out for Nolan too someday. But for now, thanks for watching. Happy New Year. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll have plenty more Bond videos this year. Bye. See you in hell, James. You first. Killer. The pleasure will be all mine. Did you check her out? Ah! Ah! to tell. Three clicks, arms the fuse. Don't say it. The writing's on the wall. Grow up, 007. I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur, a relic of the Cold War. <laughs> you know, James, I was always better. Both of you, stop it. You're like boys with toys. The trick is to quit while you're still here. I wouldn't think of it. Charming, sophisticated secret agent. Shaken, but not disturbed. <laughs> Get us out of here. Bond, only Bond. The man just won't take a hint. I need the gun. That depends on your definition of safe sex. On November 17th. Rabbit! United Artists brings you, trust me, James Bond. Why can't you just be a good boy and die? That's one trick I've never learned. 